Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Des Linden's upcoming 50K attempt, Debo's Joshua Tree FKT, and the world's biggest treadmill. We're back with another jam-packed episode of some of the top stories in the running world. I thought things would cool off a bit, but y'all are getting out there and making some news happen, and I'm here for it. Ted Corbett, known as the father of American distance running, to many now has a six mile stretch of road in New York's Central Park named after him. The Ted Corbett Loop will be signed. Corbett, of course, was not only an Olympian in the marathon, but also set the 100 mile American record one, at one point, ran over 199 marathons and ultras in his lifetime, and even at age 50, ran the New York City Marathon in 244. One current prolific marathoner is now setting her sights on moving up into the ultra distance. Des Linden will attempt to break the 50K world record next month in Oregon. This comes on the heels of her Des Stober challenge, where she ran a mile for each numbered date of the month of October this last fall. She's already covered the distance, but the question is now, how fast can she go in this race format? The current record was set in 2019 by Ali Dixon of Great Britain in 307.20. Des, my only question for you is can we live stream it? In an article on the attempt, she was quoted as saying, this is the new marathon for me. Wow. The popular training program on walking and running form, Chi Running, has been sold by founders Catherine and Danny Dreyer. As they head off into retirement, they have selected five of their master instructors as new business partners who will share the vision going forward. Have to shout out Arizona local Lisa Pozzini, who is one of the new owners and has been involved as an instructor for many years. Congratulations, Lisa. The Big's Backyard Field is shaping up rather well for this fall's championship event, which will take place in person in Tennessee. Last year, of course, saw the global format, but it is looking like things may be more back to normal this fall. As of this month, 47 of the 75 spots are filled with the remaining reserved for golden ticket races that will happen over the next several months in backyards across the world. Headlining the field are past champs and some of the best from around the globe, including Carol Saab, Johan Steen, Courtney DeWalter, Maggie Guterrell, Miguel Lara, Harvey Lewis, Guillaume Calmet, Anna Carlson, and more. In all, more than 10 athletes will be present who have gone 60 yards or more. Laz also recently hinted at a little backyard ultra in the works. I'm still not sure what that means, so if anyone has more info, please send it my way. Speaking of Laz, he did announce he will be canceling his planned LazCon 2.0, aka his trans transcontinental run. He was going to do this summer and will instead be completing the length of US 231 highway. He will start in Indiana and run all the way to Panama City, Florida, with a planned break to attend both Bowl State and Heart of the South runs this summer. He will start this April after his second vaccine shot. If you're interested in supporting this show on a larger level, we now have weekly sponsor slots available to brands looking to reach the Outhouse Nation. You'll be featured on this show in both video and audio formats. If you're interested, please reach out to me for details. 2020 Olympic Marathon Trials champion, Alephine Tuliamuk, took her first steps back towards the Tokyo Olympics postpartum with a 2.2 mile run this past week. She gave birth to her first child, Zoe, January 13th, and will now ramp up with her NAZ elite team in Flagstaff to prepare for the Olympics. Congratulations are in order to Gary Wickstead for completing every single street Edinburgh in Scotland. It looks like quite the project with thousands of streets tracked in city strides. He completed it earlier this month for the final one being George Street. It looks like he was raising money for the Anna Burnett Trust, and he walked roughly 20 kilometers per day to stay fit during the lockdown period over the past year. This is a story I'd never think I would see. I've heard of some wacky marathon concepts like dribbling a basketball, running backwards, wearing the world's largest shoes, heck, even a marathon on a helipad, but one pulling a truck, yeah. Corey Philpott completed the world's strongest marathon in Australia, pulling a Ford Ranger the entire way. The truck weighed 1.5 tons and it took him a total of 16 hours, 12 minutes. Not to be content with the new record, 
Corey plans to complete an Iron Man next with a 100 pound tree trunk tied to his back. What? In other world record news, could this be the world's largest treadmill? As seen on at Run With The Flow, AKA Florian Neuschwander's Instagram page, this video shows him running on a room-sized treadmill that apparently can go up to 50 miles per hour and a 25% incline. Not sure about you, but I'd love to visit this thing in person. Prolific 100 mile runner and hard rock champ, Jeff Browning is making a big move this week. He packed up his family from Bozeman, Montana, and will be making his new home in Flagstaff, Arizona. Yep, Arizona Nabs, another big time ultra runner. Welcome, Jeff. Hey there, if you're enjoying this week's show, please drop us a like on the video and comment below a story I missed this week. We've got some Black Canyon news for you. Aravipa race director Jubilee Page is setting out on a through hike of the trail this week. As of the filming of this show, she has already completed the 15 mile Copper Mountain Loop on the north, north end of the trail and is now making her way southbound past Bumblebee towards Emory Henderson. Jubilee has yet to complete the trail in one go, and this will be her first time doing so. Stay tuned for a video recap of her experience soon. Remember Taggart Van Etten's debut ultra this past fall at Tunnel Hill 100? The one where he won in a staggering 12 hours, 19 minutes? Well, Taggart has been training hard for his next big goal, an attempt at the 100 mile treadmill record. He's been putting in the work too running close to 200 mile weeks for the past few weeks and building up his long run, he will make his attempt May 1st. Back on January 30th, he did a 100K training run on the treadmill in 713. His latest long run, 75 miles in 844. This is gonna be interesting. Stay tuned as he tries to break the 1209 record and go sub 12. Former rim to rim to rim record holder Dave Mackey made his first double crossing since his accident, where he lost his leg a couple years back. Although he says he was about double his former record time, he was able to make the full 44 mile out and back in fine form. Love seeing stories like this. We have a new development this week in my local legend status on unknown trail from unknown trail intersection to unknown trail intersection. We learned this last week that Ali Russell had nabbed my throne. Well, this week, apparently Jeff Thompson is up next and now has six efforts on the segment in the past 90 days and has claimed the title. It's getting pretty serious and I'm gonna have to step up my game. I will hopefully have a positive update for you next week and a reclaimed title. No viewer story of the week, but we do have a new way for you to reach out to us. If you have something to share with the Outhouse Nation, please join our new Discord server at the link in the description and feel free to share stories with us there. There's been some activity on the Joshua Tree Traverse FKT this past week. First up, we have Michael Wardian who gave it an attempt but was ultimately unsuccessful. Wardian got a bit off track in the middle of the route and instead of backtracking to get back on track, he bushwhacked for about four miles, losing 50 minutes. He also ended up bonking and had some interesting weather along the way. Learned some lessons on this one. Next up, we have a successful FKT on the same route by Dylan Bowman. Debo ran the 36.6 mile point to point run in four hours, 16 minutes, 15 seconds. The former record was set by Peter Marstead last year in 425. Another shout out to San Juan County Adventures who shared that outhouse with us last week on their own FKT of the Fish and Owl Canyon Loop. David Karchner ran the 16 mile loop in four hours, 17 minutes, but says it could likely be done in sub three. You heard it folks, who's gonna get it? The loop is located southwest of Blanding, Utah. In run team news, we have a couple of new groups to announce, supported by some big shoe brands. First off is Puma's Pro Distance team, Based in North Carolina, the group is yet unnamed, but in the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area, Umstead, anyone? The group features Alstair Craig, Taylor Werner, and Fiona O'Keefe. Also on Team Puma, but training in Flagstaff, is pro Molly Seidel. Also announcing a new team is Brooks Running. The Angel City Elite team is based in Los Angeles and is a five-woman team comprised of all marathon runners, representing the black, indigenous, and people of color community. 
The team is comprised of Sabrina De La Cruz, Grace Zamudio, Grace Gonzalez, Valerie Sanchez, and Andrea Guerra. The five women formed the group after the 2020 Olympic marathon trials and then sought out support from Brooks. Check them out to learn more at angelcityelite.net or follow on Instagram at angelcity underscore elite. In this week's bonus story, only available for Patreon supporters, we'll take a look at who just ran the first ever winter badwater route from Death Valley to the top of Mount Whitney. Head over via the link in the description to join today. As for some race results from the week, we first head to Alaska for the Iditarod Trail Invitational, not the dog musher one. The 350 mile event features foot ski and fat bike categories wrapped up with your men's winner in the run category going to Jovica Spajic in six days, three hours, 21 minutes. And the ladies winner was Carrie Gibbons in 72039. After my time in the cold of Tennessee last month, I honestly cannot fathom such an event. Kudos to all who even lined up for the start. Now to another winter ultra, this one in the lower 48. The Drift 100 is a race in the Wind River Mountains of Wyoming. I could not find results of this year's event, so you'll have to keep an eye out to their website or Instagram page, but it looked like it was pretty snowy as you'd expect in the Wyoming mountains this time of year. Yikes. Belmonte Endurance Run held in Lindhurst, Virginia has been around since 2013 and saw a women's overall champion this year. Emily Torrance of Flagstaff was first to cross the finish line in eight hours, 56 minutes, ahead of the first male finisher, Dirk Schultz in 9.08. The race is held in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia on 95% single track trails. Thanks for tuning in to episode 195 of Outhouse News. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest episode. And if you'd like to support the show, please join Steep Life Media on Patreon, where you'll enjoy bonus content each week right from me for as little as $2 per month. We want to mention by name our $25 level supporters and up. At the $100 level, Brian Sands. At the $50 level, Squirrels Not Butter. Mark Grabowski, Peter and Patty Curry, as well as our $25 level supporters, Carrie Savage, Michael Perez, Nick Bailey, Steve De La Cruz, and York Beach Runner. And finally, if you'd like to own this week's pair of Jam Jam sunglasses, check out the link below. Have a shitty week. <laughs>